people who have the data. I'm not a politician, but let, and I was uh, yeah, and a part of the political system. We know that some, some politicians try to give good numbers just to please parliament or prime minister or the president or the kings. And there is something behind that we have to dig for. Yani talking about connected to water. This is big story behind connected to water. In Yemen, I knew before the war. Now, after the war, we don't know what's the case. The before the war, some areas they used to get one hour or two hours in the month. That's in Sana'a, some areas in Sana'a. <coughs> Some uh, countries in the Arab region, they are connected to the sewer system, but there is no treatment. Yesterday, I remember my brother and uh, Mr. Ahmed Nizam, uh, the CEO of South Lebanon, he was saying, we produce the sludge and throw it to the Mediterranean. And the same for the water fails on our uh, country, Lebanon. It means the percentage of connection or served is not a true and not realistic of what's happening in the Arab region. So everybody was convinced, and it is strange that quickly political politician, they said yes. Then they said, OK, try to find the new additional indicators. They assigned Esqua and Aqua for first appearance in such uh, conferences and many other uh, partners like the Arab Water Council and uh, Sidari and uh, Ra'id. Then we said we found what, 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 we, what more additional indicators we need. There was a set of indicators, 10 in water, 10 in west water. We sent it to the Arab League and they agreed. And now it is the challenge. It become real challenge. We know that collective and working as a group, it's not easy between many countries. And this is, was the, 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 this was the killing issue. Then uh, we had a good supporter in the Arab region, Dr. Jamal. We approached him together. Whenever, suppose Jordan, let me say Jordan because it's my country. They don't uh, cooperate, we go to Jamal. Jamal, he talks to. And then <coughs> it was the initiative. It was the start. Then we said, OK, if there was agreement, even disagreement within the country itself. Department of Statistics, differ, different numbers are different in utilities. <coughs> Water resources uh, different then. What's the case? We form a focal uh, national team in every country that everybody should sit together and agree about the names. That the result of this, we found it, as uh, Dr. Jamal said, in the last session of the Arab Water Ministerial Council. There was only one objection about some photos, but not no any objection for any number in that book raised by any country. And this is, was the real success, to have clean, real data agreed upon on the national level and don't, cont uh, it, it's according also to the international uh, uh, requirements in Jimmy and other things. Okay. Now, we have the book. We have the, the data. It's not only book. We have a database based in Aqua. Big bad, bad, bad database. Database for investment. Database for following the SDGs. Database which give the decision maker where to invest and how to invest. Where is the priorities? Where ha he has to improve his wastewater treatment plan for reuse? And if he want to go for secondary or third level of a treatment, the type of, the, the type of water, quality of water, affordability. Affordability, especially now we know many people are under poverty 
uh, line. I'm talking about individuals. So what we produced, it's actually, it's, it's, it's uh, the tools for planning and investment for the water and wastewater strategic project in the future. Now, this book is ready. What to do? You know, numbers are changing and situation is changing. Now we have the SDGs. <clears throat> Therefore, we should not stop on what we achieved and start singing, we did this. We came again to the league, to our brother Jamal, and we, the Arab Water Ministerial Council, took a decision that in this interim period, we sh still have links with our uh, national teams that, that we can update as much as we can. These numbers, still we have another project that to monitor the SDGs, of course, with cooperation of the UN organizations. Let's see how, how this can be done. <coughs> Second thing, we don't want to lose these focal points. They were trained. Many, uh, any, uh, big amount of, mo of money from the project was spent on developing these teams. They are experts. They, uh, and they learn from each other. This is a good thing. Now, first of all, we did it in Esqua. I think 10 countries were present. Then some countries used to train the other countries. And this is another type of cooperation between the, the people in the Arab countries, another achievement. Then uh, my friend Graham, he contacted me in this Arab Water Week and said, well, we want to make training program for SDGs. I did not, it did, doesn't took me one minute to decide yes or not, and send him yes quickly. This is what is needed. So there will be a training program after today, tomorrow, and day after tomorrow to train the people who were involved in the SDG, in the MDG Plus, to keep in touch and be prepared for any project we have to do in the, for, uh, regarding monitoring the SDGs. Now, I ask everybody here, and everybody has this book, please try to read what is in sight. Try to know what's the situation, especially the decision maker like you, Ali, Habibi, my brother. <laughs> because I think it's a good guidance for anybody to know what's the situation, what he has to do. And I promise in Aqua, and of course Esqua, they are always supporting and our umbrella to serve you anytime and any questions, any help that you can, you need, will be, will be always available. Uh, allow me today to announce launching of this book. They gave me the, this job. Otherwise, and handle it to the owner of this book. Thank you. Thank you, Khaldun. Uh, uh, indeed, yani your, your, the story, telling the story behind it uh, is so revealing uh, because it doesn't only show the ownership process and how it evolved and how ideas have matured, but also anchoring it well in regional processes, in what uh, member countries want and believe. And it is not just a, a matter of bringing a set of data and goals and telling them this is, uh, you work with this, but really reflecting what, uh, what is coming out as challenges from the region. Let me now turn to uh, my colleague, Carol, uh, who, has, um, uh, who is, uh, ha has really been the power behind this uh, initiative since 2009. She has worked uh, very diligently on building that initiative uh, and uh, working closely with uh, identifying focal points and uh, working closely with them, vetting the, the, the numbers that are coming out. Uh, up until uh, its uh, finalization and printing of the report. Carol, the floor is yours. Much. There you are. Uh, good morning, everyone. Um, happy Mother's Day for those uh, <laughs> out there as well. Um, 
I'm very pleased to be able to build on the experience uh, and the uh, storytelling that uh, also that um, engineer Haldun gave, because indeed it was when I was uh, giving the presentation on the joint monitoring program prepared by the WHO and UNICEF, two very respected UN organizations, on the MDG indicators back in 2009, that, as mentioned, I was yelled at. <laughs> Any technician can come to operate this uh, screen. Screen. Logistic company, please quickly. It will be taken from your uh, money if it is not working. I will take we'll it. We'll do out. that. <laughs> we'll do it. So as I mentioned, there was the uh, MDGs that were set up with two indicators, and when they were presented, as mentioned, they were not accepted. And basically, um, through a consultative process with the countries between Aqua and Esqua and the other uh, colleagues, basically identified uh, two clusters of indicators related to water supply and sanitation services. But when doing this, it really went beyond just access to the pipe or access to a toilet. Um, it really thought about what you have to think about in a water-scarce environment, which is the continuity of supply, the quantity of supply, the distance to source in terms of what that means for um, accessibility, um, the intermittency of the supply, um, tariff structure, affordability, and of course, on the sanitation, a lot of the discussion was not just having access to safe sanitation, but really what happens thereafter, the sustainability angle related to wastewater, be it retreated wastewater quantity, treatment type, reuse, tariff structure, um, the use after treatment, et cetera. So indeed, back in 2010, we were thinking about issues about quantity, reliability, affordability, and sustainability well before people were even envisioning yet an SDG. And what we can see now with the 2030 agenda that was adopted in 2015 we see a lot of the issues that we identified as an Arab region right there at the center of the agenda. Um, be it regarding uh, equity, safety, affordability, um, adequate access, treatment and use, which are very much part of the uh, goals and targets, uh, regarding the targets and indicators related to the goal six that aims to ensure availability and sustainable management of water and sanitation for all. These blue boxes is what the, what the targets mean, and as you can see, a lot of us, a lot of the Arab, all the Arab countries have actually sought and already collected data that can already contribute to those efforts. So I'm going to give a little bit more insight into that, because while we had two clusters of, of indicators in main um, form under MDG+, in order to collect that data, there's a whole chain of information that that went into. And this data is collected by the countries, by the utilities, by the statistical offices in terms of vetting of the population data. And it's coming straight from um, the country structures so that they can identify issues related to quantity, reliability, quality and affordability. And how was this done? Well, figuring out water consumption per day, um, figuring out continuity of supply. Is it, is it weekly, um, daily, three times a week? Less than that, unfortunately, even in the north of Jordan right now, it's, it's uh, sometimes even once a month. Um, water quality, is it disinfected or not? Tariff structures and uh, pricing. These are now we see again in the SDG 6 target 6.1. On the sanitation and wastewater side, again, while the MDG indicators really thought about improved and unimproved sanitation regarding access to that service, it went well beyond that in the MDG Plus initiative, thinking about the quantity um, of wastewater collected, um, what, how much is treated, how much is then not treated, what is it reused for, does it go into primary, secondary, or tertiary treatment? Is the safely treated wastewater, that is secondary or tertiary treated at the country level, is it used for what purpose? Agriculture, agricultural recharge, release to uh, surface waters, et cetera. And this actually really provides a way to have a set of, a set of indicators and understanding on not only water quality and the provision of the service, but also the sustainability of providing this, given that so much of our water resources in this region are groundwater aquifers, and there is a sustainable, um, sustainability component we have to think of here. Um, again, you have all this material, most of you know, but I'm just hitting um, the key storylines that we can see. And again, why is this so important and unique in the MDG Plus initiative? Under the JMP, 
how the um, information was collected on the MDG indicators relating to access to sanitation and access to drinking water, it was basically from a very consumer-based approach. So they would take the findings from household surveys, which maybe some of you have been involved in, you know, they were taken maybe every four to seven years in countries. They take the different points in time, and then they would make a curve, basically, extrapolate the missing years in between. So it was household service, so what consumers decided they had access to, determined in the surveys, and then they would take this through a desk study to determine um, how to fill in the blanks for those other years. Now this is very valuable information because it does provide the consumer perspective on access. However, it does not give you the the, the regularity of information that a utility um, and can provide, nor ability to invest on information that um, can help direct expanding service provision through uh, water operators. So where we differed significantly from the previous MDG story was that we used actually administrative records um, and sources of information from utilities and operators and from statistical offices to help compile um, our reports. Those reports, as mentioned, already were um, uh, led by a national focal point position at the ministry responsible for water. The vice chair of that working team was from a water operator, helping to coordinate all the water operators at the country level. And then the teams had relevant stakeholders, be it from statistics or other offices contributing to that. So there was a whole chain of national engagement in terms of collecting this data. This data is not coming from a desk study coming out of household analysis that, you know, again, valuable from a consumer side, but not necessarily operational as much from an investment side or from knowing what's happening now. What I'd like to um, also suggest and offer to you is that as you look through your report for 2016, um, there has been some improvements from the year before. You will have the names of the people who provided the data, who led that country team. You have the names for every country of the utilities that contributed information. This is a huge resource for those who want to continue information on this as well and continue to work because you know where the data comes from very specifically. And while the report provides you with national, in, national data for the years 12 and 2012 and 13, and 14 and 15 already coming up over here uh, very soon. Um, this, uh, it shows exactly at the subnational level, at the utility level, where that information is coming from. And another um, difference, because while the, the other global process is things in terms of percentages of population with access to a service, we are looking at it in terms of population, but also in terms of volumes. Because again, when, you've, when you manage something at the country level, at the local level, you want to know what the quantity of wastewater is that is being produced, the quantity that is being reused. So it's a different type of way of processing and presenting the data for decision making that I think really provides a, a very important value added here, in addition to differentiation between urban and rural as done at the global level. So again, you have the reports here. I'm just going to do some very quick submits so we can have some time uh, for, of course, the other uh, interventions. But for example, you have country profiles uh, for all the 18 countries that contributed to the report, and then summary tables that provide uh, the data for the indicators and the population base for which the um, people-based uh, data was uh, presented, so you can see how the calculations were generated. And for example, on water consumption, what does the data show? Well, not surprisingly, Palestine has the lowest rate of, of consumption in the region, and we're going to have a chance to hear more about that later. And it goes up, and it's interesting to see that, again, this is country level data. This is not extrapolated. This is based on their calculations to see then, um, based on uh, their resource availability and fresh water um, and, and consumption rates, what it is. This is not the Aquastat fresh water availability number. That's a very different story. This accounts for desal, salination. This accounts for reuse. So there are numbers really that are very different from what you might see um, in other forums. Again, the data you have. Another thing that is very different that is presented here is tariffs. In SDG 6.1, they talk about affordability. We have a way that we've already mapped out the tariff structures in the countries, which you don't find in global reports. Again, very important for decision making. And what you can see here is that most countries do have some type of volumetric tariff, though no one believes it in the Arab region. There are some type of volumetric systems in place that allow us to use that as a policy tool. Of course, flat rates also exist in some countries, but the basis is there to think about costing and pricing potentially. 
On the wastewater side, again, there's data tables. There's several at the end. So again, the country data is in the beginning per country, and at the end, you will get the summary data for all the wastewater indicators. Uh, and focus was really placed on trying to find out how much treatment was provided because that is a potential resource for adding on to our water deficits in this region. Um, some quick storylines here, for example, um, when we think about the quantity, when we think about the sustainability dimension, uh, we can see that uh, collected wastewater by volume, Egypt is a huge network of, uh, and their holding company is involved in water supply as well as wastewater treatment. Their holding company actually is not even called sanitation. It's water and wastewater. <laughs> sanitation is not even the title because they realize the volume um, involved in managing that, that story. And you can see that the volume is very significant there, which also provides a potential for reuse. Although Egypt, as we can see from the bottom in terms of the amount of tre safely treated water that is being reused, is not reusing, reusing that much. There is a potential there that we can see from the data that they provided, that was vetted by the holding company. Um, on other sides, countries like Jordan, which is uh, obviously by volume is a much smaller country than Egypt, but from that amount that is safely treated, which is a very high degree in Jordan, we can see that 98% is going to go to other uses. Kuwait, 100% is being used. And not only that, it's being used then for what purposes, and that's what the report also allows you to see. Well, for um, Kuwait and uh, Jordan, it's very largely for irrigation purposes, landscaping, et cetera. So this type of information is much more than access to sanitation. It really helps you to help direct what type of information you need for action and for the achievement of SDG 6. Um, I'll close up because uh, I've taken some time, but I just wanted to highlight again that uh, there were twinnings that were done, as uh, Engineer Khaldun mentioned, to allow exchanges between utilities. And there was an effort to complement a bit of insight into the consumer side through pilot field surveys that were, connected, uh, that were conducted in uh, seven of the countries. These countries were identified by the Arab Ministerial Water Council. They asked in the first phase to uh, focus on Palestine and the least developed countries. And in the second phase, to, hit, to um, examine um, those who are um, facing conflict uh, as, as strategic places to, to look at field surveys. So actually, there was, through Ra'id and their NGO network, um, field surveys conducted in some very difficult regions of the area to see what they are finding in terms of their access on the ground um, uh, to uh, water supply and sanitation services. This is not complementing or changing any of the data provided through the national teams. It provides insight sites, though, about how much accessibility is there, and you could see those country case studies in the, in the reports. So finally, to wrap up, what are the key lessons that we have learned? Some of the key lessons, I think there were several, but um, some of the key lessons is it's important to look beyond just supply and drinking water and sanitation. We have to look at the whole story, especially in water-scarce countries that think about supply, sanitation, wastewater treatment, and reuse, and how to monitor that in that integrated framework. And that is fully in line with the spirit of the 2030 Agenda and SDG 6. We should also um, continue to encourage uh, the use of administrative records. I'm very happy to report that actually um, the JMP is moving to those, and I think we're going to hear some of our colleagues also mention this, that there is now an openness through the UN Statistical Commission to look at other data sources, and I think we have shown the value of that in this work. Um, thirdly, it's very important to engage the actors that are going to, in the end, make the changes on the ground. When you give a decision maker some report that's coming out of a survey that they saw maybe that was prepared five, six years ago and extrapolated, that's not the same as the person at the ministry, at the utility, at the operator who contributed the data and then helped to make that figure the basis of decision making. So that engagement is very important, as well as engaging the community, because can, they can use this number, the field outputs, the data, to also activate themselves. And if you recall, um, SDG 6.6b, which is a means of implementation, actually asks all community, all countries, to further engage the, the public and local communities in empowering them for water action for their, uh, to, to achieve universal services. And finally, um, really the value of using data and presenting it for different users and for different purposes.